This is a reading of Steve Ditka's 32-page package. Most people know, at least most people who are into comic books know, that Steve Ditko is one of the inventors of Spider-Man, and he walked away from his creation after about 32 issues, did some other stuff, but was committed to the philosophy of Ayn Rand. And eventually he got into creating these indie comic books, which are published uh, in Washington State. He has a whole series of them. And it took me a long, long time to read them. One of the reasons is they are completely lacking in humor. They're very uh, doctrinaire. But they do give a good understanding of Ayn Rand's philosophy of objectivism. So he does have an interesting approach, and I think it's, uh, it's grown on me. I've become a fan of them. But uh, there's no question that part of the attraction is the fact that they are created by Steve Ditko. If these were done by anyone else... Uh, I find it difficult to believe that anyone would read them and probably wouldn't read them myself. There's the emotional attachment that Ditko creates them. This particular issue, though, does have a very interesting uh, article at the end, which I'm going to show, which concerns the creation of Spider-Man and his claim uh, to the creative rights and how he was conned out of it. Basically, this issue has, I think, a lot of anger in it. He goes through in a very um, rationalist perspective, according to the Ayn Rand philosophy, what is truth. And his, what he likes to say is that A is A. In other words, there is a truth, and a, a rational person will acknowledge the truth. Basically, he argues that if a person does not accept the truth, it's because they are intellectually dishonest. And... Uh, He's going through this polemic here, saying how uh, making the distinction between people who are committed to intellectual truth and the rest of the people. Not quite sure why this needs to be said in such a strident manner. I, I feel like uh, Ditko probably has a lot of anger and resentment that he's working out through this. Uh, what's also fascinating is how rudimentary the art is, especially when you consider that Ditko it truly is a genius. Uh, if you see any of his early work, which is being put out by Fantagraphics, or in the Spider-Man omnibus, uh, there's no question he is an artistic genius in his design, in his ability to bring out characters, in his understanding of anatomy. And in these uh, uh, indie, I call them indie uh, publications by him, uh, the art is virtually non-existent. In fact, it seems like something that someone who has no talent from an artistic standpoint would do. In terms of the layout, uh, there's no design that's particularly attractive. It's simply a manifesto that uh, is him working out 
his deeply felt uh, anger. And, you know, one of the things that's interesting uh, when I read this, I've after um, reading Steve Ditko's stuff, I listened to some interviews by Ayn Rand online, and there, there are many of them. If you go to YouTube, you can just bring her up. What's really striking to me is how thin-skinned she is. There is an interview Ayn Rand did with Phil Donahue, and there's a Q&A with the audience, and an audience member asks a perfectly reasonable question that isn't to Ayn Rand's liking. And Ayn Rand uh, completely is incapable of dealing with a person who disagrees with her. She starts screaming at her and uh, just surprisingly thin-skinned uh, for someone who one would think would be able to handle uh, debate in a rational sense, since rationality is her whole uh, perspective. But it, what goes with Ayn Rand, at least what I've seen in her interviews, she may be rational, but she comes across as intolerant. And that sense of intolerance seems to be reflected here in Ditko's work. This, this is what makes this particular um, issue interesting, though. What I've just gotten to is his uh, argument as to why he should be considered the creator of Spider-Man. He says that Stan Lee, on the one hand, did a one- or two-page synopsis for the artist who must then draw 21 to 24 pages of story art panels. And the dialogue must then be added, working from the artist's rough panel script. So, was Stan Lee the creator, or Steve Ditko, who came up with the design and the spirit of Spider-Man? Steve Ditko makes the point here that if you look at Marvel stationery, what do you see? The word Spider-Man or the Spider-Man who is in costume? And here he says, well, if you're interested in facts and truth, you know that Marvel has on their stationery the Spider-Man figure. And so that must mean that Spider-Man is the figure, so therefore Steve Ditko is the creator. Steve Ditko cut off all contact with Stan Lee because Stan Lee gave an interview and said, I consider Steve Ditko to have it be a, a co-creator of Spider-Man. But uh, Stan Lee has been very wishy-washy on that. There's a, f a really good documentary on YouTube called Searching for Steve Ditko, and Stan Lee is interviewed there, and he basically takes all credit for uh, creating Spider-Man and then backtracks simply to... Uh, placate Steve Ditko, but it, it doesn't feel genuine. So Ditko has a point that uh, his point being that uh, Stan Lee is an opportunist. He, yeah, according to Ditko, um, he quotes Stan Lee, saying where Stan Lee said, "You know me, I'll take any credit that isn't nailed down." So. Why do others allow injustice and approve the unearned? That's, a, that's the question that Ditko has. Why is anyone allowing the injustice of Stan Lee taking credit for Spider-Man? And is rewarding this untruth 
respect for justice. Ditko here reprints a letter that Stanley sent to him saying, I have always considered Steve Ditko to be Spider-Man's co-creator. That word considered is what infuriated Ditko. He thought it's disingenuous because it's a qualification to show the mealy-mouthed nature of Stanley. And uh, Ditko here wraps up his issue, giving three quotes from Stanley. Uh, one, August 8, 1999, I have always considered Steve Ditko to be Spider-Man's co-creator. I write this to ensure that Steve Ditko receives the credit to which he is so justly entitled. In February 23, 1963, Stanley wrote, we have a new character named Dr. Strange. T'was Steve's idea. And then in December 1999, Stanley said, um, he was asked, what is, which hero is your favorite creation? And Stanley said, I don't know, Dr. Strange. Well, Spider-Man, he's the most famous creator I created, famous character I created. So Stanley, according to Ditko, and he pulls out these quotes to support himself, Stanley will distort the truth uh, when he can. And that, according to Steve Ditko, is an injustice. I personally feel that Ditko has, has a point. He, he definitely has a point. Uh, he, he is a genius. He created Spider-Man and should be given full credit for that. That is the only uh, justice that makes sense. His presentation, though, in this uh, of his argument in this 32-page package is something that I think only a die-hard fan would read. But there you have it. You can decide for yourself.